in Chicago. We're on Western Avenue at Dark Matter Coffee. We have uh, Basque in town. They're from Asheville, North Carolina. Um, we've got uh, these dudes in. They came to visit. We have some uh, beers and some food. And now, shortly in a few moments, they'll be playing an empty bottle down the street with the mighty Weed Eater. They're going to be performing their hit uh, album. It's God Luck and Good Speed. Uh, it's one of my favorites, and I think it's one of the albums that most people, everyone that I know of, kind of uh, refers back to that record when I talk to them. So uh, really excited about this show, and I'm excited to have these guys in. Uh, we're going to start by introducing everybody in the band. Um, so we'll start here. Yeah, my name's uh, Ray Worth. I play guitar and vocals. My name's Jesse Van Note, and I play bass. My name is Scott Middleton, and I'm the drummer. I'm Zeb, and I play guitar and sing. Uh, well, thanks, guys. We um, I had a couple questions I was going to go over. We'll try to make it quick. Um, saw you guys have been on this tour with uh, with Weed Eater. Um, it's you guys said you've done about four days now, or is this your fifth day? It's more than that. Uh, I mean, like two no. weeks. In. Oh, two weeks. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome, and it's been going really well. Yeah. It's been awesome. Yeah, really fun. Your tour before this one, it says you uh, were with Royal Thunder and uh, Black Tusk. Is that correct? Yeah, we, since we uh, did that tour, but um, we, we did a month-long tour back in August and September this past year with Paul Bear and K.O. Dot, and that was an awesome experience. But Paul Bear has been a band we've looked up to for uh, quite some time, and you know I, I feel like they're one of the most important bands in underground heavy music right now, so to tour with them uh, was really awesome, and they're awesome dudes too, and just as goofy and weird as we are, so it was, it was a nice click between us and... Paul Bear and KO Dot. It was. It felt like home. Yeah, that's awesome. That was uh, when I saw that that matchup. It uh, was really exciting for me. I felt like that really made a lot of sense. And that was actually one of the questions I was curious about was with Weed Eater. How did that um, come to play? Have you known those guys for a long time? Or uh, basically, we've been really lucky. Like uh, we've just been approached via email, being like, "Hey, you want to go out with these guys?" And we're like, "Yes, we do. Yes, we would love to go out with those guys." So yeah, it was the same thing with uh, Weed Eater. I guess we got enough of a little bit of hype underneath us now, which is cool. Enough where we're getting people that's like seeking us out. So so we got hit up by their agent and was like, "Hey, you know, you want to do like a th three week blast up, you know, around East Coast and Midwest?" And it wasn't even until the tour was announced that we knew that it was from their like legendary album, which made us. We were like, "Oh shit!" We were like even more excited. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I was curious if, um, after listening to this newer record, it feels like uh, maybe you guys maybe took a step back on the like heavier aspects of uh, what I remember from like American Hollow. Um, and I was curious if your fan base, um, if you're getting like good response from people that are coming to see Weed, or did you think it's uh, like are you guys being received well? It's always been something that we haven't been afraid of to be either the heaviest band on a light bill or the lightest band on a heavy bill. Um, I think that it always is going to make that band be remembered and make that band stand out. Um, and we also like heavy is a relative term, you know, I mean, there's, there are so many things out there that are heavy without being loud and screamy, yeah. I guess, you know, so we, we, when we, when we talk about heaviness for us, it's more of tone and it's more of the weight of music itself, you know? And I think that carries across with most of these audiences we play with because I feel like f for for the most part you know a lot of a lot of people that are into metal music or heavy music have a pretty broad spectrum especially now with how the lines are so blurred with genres and stuff now that I, I think we're kind of in the right place at the right time for the stuff we're doing and we always have just um from the start four guys that listen to four different things and just play what we want to play and we've been fortunate that those things all work together. Yeah, that's awesome. So, and with the new record, it was, uh, you know, Scott and Ray had written most of the material for American Hollow prior to Zeb and I being in the band, where Ramble Beyond is pretty much everybody's influence in it. So, um, and we were able to develop that record over a longer period of time and spend a lot more time in the studio and and stuff like that. Yeah. So, and, and <laughs> yes, yeah, and spent more money on it too. Yeah. That also uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, what you're hearing in the new record versus the old is definitely just like uh, the time and kind of like the sweat of everybody together, you know, um, coming at it. I mean, we all listen to 
completely different music with like little like dovetailing kind of interests. So yeah, it's like a lot of like push and pull, and I think that kind of shines through in a in a positive way on the on the album. Yeah, that's exciting. I really honestly think that we're in like a golden time or like golden era for uh, heavy music right now. It's uh, I don't know. If, um, I know you follow, but I run an Instagram page that's um, a lot of music that I play at the bar that I work at, and um, I call it Metal Vinyl Weekend, and it's all just, uh, it's all heavy metal music, in my opinion, but I talk to a lot of older folk and that kind of stuff, and they're like, you don't play any priest, and you don't play any uh, obituary or like that kind of stuff, which I mean, I like those bands and I play that kind of stuff, but I really enjoy being able to venture into, like, I want to say one of the first, uh, last conversations we had was over a True Widow t-shirt that I was wearing yeah, and absolutely. it's yeah. like when I do, I mean there's a time and a place for uh, death metal and that kind of thing but it's nice to have an option where um, you're not just sitting there listening to you uh, or the shirt you're wearing right now I mean yeah, she is one of the heaviest in my opinion one of the heaviest artists out there right now and just heavy by pure emotion it's the like you know it it makes you sink when you yeah. listen to it you know and and to me that's heavy that's what heavy music is and speaking of uh, weird um link ups of the tour of ministry uh like it seems wild to have them yeah, two on tour together for her. Uh, uh, agreed she's getting yeah. such exposure it's yeah. awesome so um so the lyrically on ramble beyond um, I read through some of the stuff and I've, I've caught myself as a listener not reading lyrics all that often so doing this interview was kind of fun because it forced me to get into uh, kind of being a little bit more uh, intimate with that record. Um, after reading it, it almost sounds like maybe there was like a story being told or something like that. Would you say that that's true? Or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I haven't, well, I haven't really talked about this uh, in any like kind of press situation. Not that there are that many press situations, but like... <laughs> But, uh, but, but yeah, like, um, so the first half of the record is like kind of more t together and concepty. And then the second half is, uh, a little bit looser and more personal. Um, and the first half is, <laughs> okay. So there's this podcast called the memory palace and it's, if you've never listened to it, you absolutely should. It's just like remarkably beautiful and well done. And it's just these like small snippets from history, um, like told between anywhere between like two and 20 minute stories basically. And so those first three tracks are all stories that I heard on that podcast and just like resonated so much with me that like I looked into them like a little bit more and wrote lyrics based on them. Um, the first one is, uh, I believe in the orchard is about, uh, John Glenn taking off into space. And this is, uh, this is like, I think like just like from a, storytelling standpoint like one of the most interesting is that like he is like this you know midwestern dude uh you know the devout christian like when he before he goes into space he like goes and asks like his pastor at his church like if it's okay if he goes into space and he's like i mean yeah why not sure <laughs> so uh and then so he gets like launched into space and he's flying you know above the earth and all of a sudden there's like these glowing orbs that completely encircle the the capsule and he doesn't know what it is like just out of nowhere these beautiful beams of like balls of light just everywhere and like he doesn't know what it is he doesn't know if it's like an alien if it's god if it's you know what and uh like time later finally tells that it's just urine ejected from and frozen in space from the castle and so it's just like that just like resonated so much with me, and I was like, oh, "You could make such a good song yeah. out of that." <laughs> awesome. uh, yeah. So, and then the second one is just kind of more like naturey stuff, <laughs> you know, yeah. like just like things that kind of inspire us and and where we live, and you know, like growing up in Appalachia and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. Um. I'll get back to where you guys were growing up in just a split second, but that's actually was when you were uh, mentioning like aspects of what's being heavy. That's why actually why I was excited because I, um, after hearing American Hollow, there's even like aspects where um, like I generally lean more towards stuff that's on the heavier side. I remember like even like a drum part at the end that was almost borderline like black metal. Like it was like uh, pretty yeah, we, fast. The blast, <laughs> yeah, we, we've moved on from the, the blast beats since then like for, you know. Sally or not, whatever. <laughs> Either way, you know, like some people like, yeah, they threw a, a blast beat in there and we had a little sing-along song or a, a chant. Um, 
but yeah, it's, it's been a minute since we've like incorporated that, but I don't want to ever be too scared to try whatever, you know, if some, as long as it resonates with us, that's all that matters. Like, you know, we're not going to pl- probably play a polka part or something, but, yeah, um, yeah, like <laughs> I'm, I think, yeah, we're, we're willing to get out there a little bit and, and challenge yeah. things musically. So that was, um, the, the, <clears throat> like some of the lyrical content was heavy enough that that's why I was saying it's, um, these songs when we, when I, when you dropped off that record at the bar, uh, shortly after you guys left, I played it and, um, within a few moments there was like, I, I don't even think I made it two songs in and two separate guys at the bar had chimed in to ask what the record was and then somebody actually got up from a table and had came over nice. to ask what I was playing and it got received really well. And uh, generally for me, if I play stuff like that, it's almost like a bad sign, I feel like. I don't mean to sound like that guy, but I'm like, oh no. But um, I, I knew it was so good because I uh, the, um, the door girl that was working, um, our, our receptionist, she came around the corner and after it was done, I hadn't even finished or like finished the B side. I was like, I think I'm gonna flip this record again and I'm gonna play it a second time. Nice. So yeah, we um, I really love the record. I think that um, there's some songs like on the on the new record that are, almost remind me it's like a borderline like modern rock anthems. They're oh, really wow. large sure. songs. So Absolutely. yeah, no, it's um, I'm excited to see you guys play. Um, we talked earlier before we got on camera about. Um, you guys uh, playing in venues and stuff around the area. Um, is there a favorite venue in Asheville? Is like, what's the scene out like out there? Yeah, um, our go-to venue is the Moth Light, and it's funny that we're playing at the Empty Bottle tonight because John Hensey, the owner operator of the Moth Light, uh, cut his teeth over here down the street at the Empty Bottle. So it's kind of like our two worlds uh, colliding tonight. And yeah, so shout out to the Moth Light. Uh, they treat us well. It's an amazing venue in Asheville, North Carolina, and they they're not. Uh, scared to go a little bit avant-garde with the musical selections there and for for that like for that reason I really respect them and it's a huge part of our community and I love them for that so he opened up a really really nice gorgeous venue and isn't afraid to have death metal bands playing there That's awesome. and it's it's and the whole spectrum and he does a, he does a free night on Mondays there where he just pays bands if you're a touring band playing on a Monday he pays you out of the bar. It's a free show just to get people there, and then he pays out of the bar. I mean, he's he's a true music lover, and he's super supportive. So we're we're stoked to play the venue where he's learned how to learned how to do this stuff. So yeah. that's pretty cool. That's awesome. And then to like touch on one more thing was like you were talking about like this being like like a really good time for heavy music from like even like from like a small town like Asheville, North Carolina perspective. There's like this awesome middle market for heavy music that's expanding because like when I moved there like eight or ten years ago you had like a hundred cap room or you'd see you know like local bands or you'd have to go see like anthrax at like the thousand cap room so it's awesome to see this like middle market kind of growing for that like that 250 to 500 cap room and moth light is like definitely helped aid in that growth process so it's exciting um that that's how i feel empty bottle is like that for me it's um anytime i think I, I always think back to the fireside when i think of like the glory days for great shows in chicago and i think that empty bottle is like the competitor for that every time i see their lists and everyone that's played there it's always so impressive um the scene the scene out there are there a lot of ba- you said there are there a lot of bands coming from north carolina is there any of your do you guys like that was another thing i wanted to ask is if you guys do any of you guys play in any other bands besides this one like on the side or yeah we got like pretty much everyone except me plays in uh plays in a, in a, in a different band that's around town is and then with like the artists and stuff that are growing in Asheville I guess the only complaint I have is I wish they would just last a little longer because <laughs> a lot of times they're just like a little short-lived where it's like oh man that band was so sick but they were only around for like 18 months you know what I mean and then they're like whoo but yeah if everyone wants to touch on their other projects um, I play in a uh, black metal project called Black Mountain Hunger. Um, our singer um, is a really super talented um, tattoo artist and vocalist. Her name's Balin, um, and she is about to have a baby. So um, we're kind of on, on hiatus at the moment, but we're writing a new record while she's on, I guess, maternity leave, you'd say. So, um, and then we'll present the record to her uh, once we're done with it, and if she wants to wants to sing on it cool if not then we're gonna have to try and decide to go another direction but we have some stuff up on Bandcamp right now um some older stuff so um i also play uh, in a band called via which is like shoegaze post-rock spacey stuff and uh, i've been playing around Asheville a little bit more with that and been to atlanta recently um just kind of regional right now and uh yeah it's cool so check it out via yeah. via avl uh and i play in like a cosmic like post country kind of band it's like just like a lot of like uh improv and 
like twangy riffs. It's like two guitars or like guitar and pedal steel and bass and drums. And it's just, you know, kind of like a little bit out there. It's like really new, but it's called Rye. Um, and we've been playing some shows around town and stuff, which is really fun. Cool. I feel like that's how, in Chicago here. We get a lot of that where uh, lots of bands and the, the scene is very incestual, but it's like you'll get one guy, he plays drums in like six different bands or something like that. And it's always cool to me to see what projects people will take on and their other interests in music, like well, you said. I mean, a good drummer, that's why you hold on to them. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, we don't have too many. Or, I mean, there's quite a few, but I, I think the scene out here is really... Uh, I think we're lucky to have it. There's a lot of great bands uh, that are coming from here, speaking of which, uh, Atlas Moth and uh, Harm's Way just ended up on the Billboard charts. I saw that it was uh, really exciting. I don't know if you guys have any favorite Chicago bands or if there's anybody that... Uh, oh, yeah. Very big influence uh, for me, like early on, like, yeah, probably like a huge influence on, on this band for me, like uh, one of the first bands that introduced me to Doom in any, in any way, really, and I was... We listened to Australasia a couple days ago on the trip, and I was like, man, this reminds me of stocking shelves in a grocery store uh, between, like, you know, midnight and, like, 6 in the morning. I just used to be rocking that, and it helped get me through. Um, and, yeah, I'm a big fan of the Atlas Moth as well. And uh, there's this ambient artist in town right now called Mind Over Mirrors that's performing, I think, not this Friday, but the next one at some uh, art gallery in town or some museum. And uh, it's, like, some of the best ambient, like, um, kind of kraut rocky um, experimental music. So Mind Over Mirrors is definitely hits the spot for me right now. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan of uh, Russian Circles, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I pretty much, like, yeah, Mike Sullivan's, like, 40% of what I model my heavy tone after. Yeah. Pretty much. I was like, oh, okay, well, for my clean stuff, I kind of go for this, like, drive-by truckers kind of vibe. Uh, you know, kind of Almond Brothers, you know, like, kind of gritted up uh, Southern Rock. But, you know, when I get it heavy, I'm like, oh, I love that that tone that he does you yeah. know, for that for that project. Yeah. And I'll go ahead and date myself because these bands aren't together anymore, but uh, Braid, Promise Ring, and uh, I, I've seen all those bands at, at Fireside Bowl, and it, it was, or, and it was uh, just uh, some of the best times of my life. And I know not Chicago Champagne, but Hum will always be one of my favorites ever of all time. Yeah, so, sure. But it's that, it's that sound... Once again, whether it be metal, whether it be indie, whether it be whatever, there is definitely Chicago has a sound to yeah. it. You know what I mean? And there is, there definitely is a sound that resonates throughout the Midwest, and Chicago kind of seems to be like the heart of all that. Um, and it's cool the band that we're on tour with as well, Hyborian, is from Kansas City, so we've been able to talk to them a lot about bands like Colesque and Get Up Kids and and stuff like that as well, because they're all in that scene there as well. You know, so it's just, you know, and then everything evolves evolves from there. But uh, Chicago has long been on my map of, of musical interest for, for a long time. That's awesome. Yeah, we've had hard hitters in every scene, I feel like, the, the punk scene. I mean, it's, uh, you can take it or leave it, but like Screeching Weasel and like bands like that or whatever. I mean, bands that were like um, milestones in my childhood and that kind of stuff. It's crazy to find out that I would, like I'd be going to uh, shows at small venues in the suburbs and stuff like that and find out that some of these bands like that's where some of the stuff all spawned from and that kind of stuff it was really uh cool to see a lot of these bands even grow up and eventually become fallout boy and right. bands like that right. or whatever right. it's really wild to yeah. see yeah. that scene turn into what yeah. it is and, um but yeah the uh so uh coming down to my last couple questions here but um is there um is there a, if, have you played chicago many times is there a venue that you like to play or a I believe this is only our second time, right? Yeah. And I think the first time was called Livewire, and we mentioned it to the guy at Empty Bottle earlier, and I think he said the name has since changed. Um, we played with like a psych rock band that night. Was it was it Dead Feathers? Yeah. yeah. Um, I believe. So yeah, only our second time playing here, but um, on a musicianship level, uh, yeah, like I'm stoked to play tonight. I feel like I have to bring it up to another level because like yeah, a major city, one of the biggest cities in America. You guys have a giant musical lineage, and it's like. Don't fuck around. Better bring it tonight. You know what I mean? <laughs> Have a Three Floyds beer. Smoke, smoke a beer or two. Yeah. Get your mind right and hit those drums hard. Cool, man. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of our staff from I mean, the bars coming out, and it sounded like a lot of our friends were gonna from the city were going to be in town, so um, I'm expecting a big turnout. It looks like it's going to be cool. Um, so I saw, and it's kind of non, uh, we're getting off music now or whatever, but I saw uh, this thing on the news today, or it was uh, like a feed on Facebook that said, um, so Chicago is no longer a, a deep dish city. 
They said that, um, <laughs> or not known that way any longer. They said that it's, the truth is coming out that there's a, uh, a thin crust pizza in Chicago, that that's what we're known for here now. Um, uh, that's the way that we, I've been eating it forever. They call it tavern style pizza. All right. um, it's real thin crust and they cut it into squares. This is a square, yeah. <laughs> we talked about this. We just yeah. talked about this, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. There's places all over the city that like, even in the suburbs when I was growing up that mimicked this like tavern style pizza. And uh, growing up, I remember eating like uh, deep dish and um, that kind of stuff and never understanding it either and eating all these pizzas thinking like uh, it was it's unfortunate that we're known for like pizzeria uno and stuff like that um, so if, funny story. if you guys uh, if you guys have been in in the area is there a uh, like a restaurant or anywhere or do you guys know the food scene are you big in the food scene? Yeah, I, yeah, I, a little bit we uh, I'll let someone else take this one um, so the first time I ever came to Chicago I was uh, still like vegan <laughs> that has since passed, but, uh, you know, like Chicago diner as, as like, a you know, having been vegan for like a really long time, Chicago diner was like a pretty amazing experience. Um, you know, coming from like small town North. Yeah. Those milkshakes. Oh my God. It was intense. Um, when I was a kid actually in my hometown in rural North Carolina, uh, there was a restaurant called, uh, old Chicago pizza that served square pizza like that. Yeah. And this was in, you know, the 90s so That's but yeah awesome. we've eaten food here we've eaten good food here um I'll, I'll be super generic and say kuma's corner because yeah. it's awesome and I, I love it i love that you can go into a spot that blasts death metal music and it can be a guy with a mohawk and tattoos sitting next to a guy in a business suit all chowing down on a burger together and having a good time um and then also um you know we we've stopped at three floyds a few times coming through and always had great food at, at three floyds too yeah very very well done yeah these um, dudes are so talented yeah and then <laughs> And, uh, last time, uh, last time we were uh, in town, uh, we played Carbondale, and then we came into town because uh, the guys were shooting a Gear Gods at uh, Chicago Music Exchange, and uh, we all went out and had some pretty killer tie. I don't remember the name of the spot, but the tie was great. But Scott skipped out because he had to have deep dish pizza. So, <laughs> you watch you tell him your yeah, I made him drive me around a couple blocks, and uh, I called old Lou Melnatis, and. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Are you familiar with Lou? Yeah, yeah, old Lou's. Yeah, it was, it was it was very messy to eat in the band van, and I think they all hated me and resented me for a minute, but it, it was thick. I remember it was... It was heavy. I was, like, carrying it to the, the van. I'm like, oh, shit. I remember it was this big, and it weighed probably about five pounds. Easy. I mean, it was yeah. heavy. Yeah, it's like a whole family thing. Yeah. Yeah, and that's no joke all that tomato I had to. Topic, yeah, for sure. I just had to try it. The Thai food was really good, though. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. food out here is outstanding. I think we're really lucky. Um, the only reason I even brought up the pizza, I'm not going to try to plug too much, but there's a spot I always try to recommend if you're in from out of town. Um, Pequod's is a spot that a lot of people go. It's um, Noah here will uh, vouch, and uh, most of my friends all go there. Um, it's kind of similar to like a De Detroit-style pizza where they put um, like a cheese around the edge of the crust, and it's baked in a pan. So it's not quite thin crust, it's, but it's like fluffy and thick. Oh, uh, man. If you ever get the opportunity, it's further up on the north side, but it's not quite what that tavern style pizza is like you mentioned, and it's not quite the same thing as uh, deep dish, but man, it's, uh, if you like pizza and you're ever in the area, you should check out Pequod's. We don't like pizza. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Who likes pizza? Um, so quick, quick fire, ketchup on a hot dog or no? It's a Chicago thing. We don't put ketchup on our hot dogs. Absolutely. Who would do such a thing? Yeah, right. <laughs> Absolutely ketchup. <laughs> Yellow mustard is disgusting. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I was kidding. I was kidding too. Thank you, Naughty, for opening the floodgates. Yeah, ketchup. I know we're in Chicago. Shoot me now. Also, I'm sorry. Island, you're not supposed to put ketchup on a hot dog either. They get real story. upset about that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And am I going to get kicked out if I say I don't like hot dogs at all? No, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, 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 okay. I didn't know. I, didn't. I wanted to ask first. I wanted to ask first. <laughs> oh, so this actually is a kind of a fun part of this is uh, sports. You guys, do you guys not have um, a baseball team, in North Carolina? Uh, not majorly. No. I think the Charlotte Knights might be farm team for the White Sox, which I'm not a big baseball guy. Sure. But 
when you're ADD, baseball doesn't work for your brain too well. You know, you just need something a little bit faster. But if you want, let's. I'm, I, was, I was actually really excited to talk about the Blackhawks. I'm not sure how they're doing this year, but. Yeah, I actually, in all honesty, that hoodie that I was wearing was a gift for my brother for Christmas. I'm not the biggest hockey oh, fan, so I don't know that much. Um, but at the same time... Uh, he begs that there's someone to talk hockey with us. Uh, yeah. Somebody talk hockey with me. I, I, I've got uh, sports friends, so when I bump into them at the show, I'll line you guys up. But um, but I do love baseball a lot, and that's why I was curious, like, um, if you guys, is, is in that area, is there a team? Like, where, we're, where Three Floyds is at and where I grew up... Um, is in Northwest Indiana, and they, Indiana doesn't have a professional baseball team either. So everybody, I feel like roots for the Chicago teams. Is there like, do you guys side one way or the other? Are you guys sports guys at all? It's mostly uh, in the Carolinas, is, is people usually have gone for the Braves over the years. Just, we're three or plus hours from Atlanta, and yeah, it's, it's like a Brave, Braves country baseball wise. And we do have a, a, a AAA team in Asheville. It's yeah. a small team That's called the Asheville Astros? Tourists. Astros. Huh? Are they the Astros farm team? Who the tourist? Tourists. Uh, I think it's uh, the Devil Rays team. Yeah. I'm not sure. Some, yeah. some team. Um, <laughs> the uh, I uh, so my whole family is from Southern Illinois. Um, so I grew up a Cubs fan, oh, cool. um, and uh, I've been to Wrigley Field several times. And um, I. Uh, at one point or another, uh, my family moved us to New York, um, and I kind of quickly became a Yankees fan because that's just what you do when you live in New York. Um, but um, always had it in my heart for the Cubs, and uh, it was funny. The um, well, it's, it's not funny. It's nice, a nice story. Um, my uh, my grandfather uh, passed away, um, and uh, he uh, it was a couple years ago, and he said uh, when he was going that he was taking the goat with him. It was one of the last things he said. And that was the year the Cubs won the World oh, Series, which yeah. was pretty pretty freaking awesome. That's so, nice. um, we show that night. We were on tour. Yeah, 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 we were on tour when the Cubs won that night too, yeah. and it was uh, it's pretty pretty surreal, pretty amazing, and um, I've always loved the um, yeah. You guys definitely love your sports here in Chicago, and the uh, the devotion the devotion for your team without hatred of other teams has always been pretty cool because a lot of times uh, those two things get really confused. We talk about that a lot between other sports teams. So. Yeah, that's how I was, uh, that would brought me to the next question was Cubs or Sox, and I know yeah, you definitely Cubs. Cubs. I think it's cool. I, I grew up a Sox fan, and when I moved into the neighborhood that I live in, um, it, I, I mentioned it's for real. It's my the stadium is my backyard. When you go up to the stop sign, you can see the back of the the Comiskey Park from my neighborhood. And um, but growing up, the the Sox fans were definitely far more like violent, and they were the ones who were ready to tell you in your face that yeah. they didn't like your team. Yeah, or the Cub, Cubs fans stuff. just want to get drunk and hug yeah for the most part so yeah absolutely <laughs> like i went to um i went to a game wearing socks gear to a cubs game and every like the worst i got was like boo or like that kind of thing but like if you wear that kind of stuff to a socks game you're like really taking a risk of getting beat up if you were to wear your cubs stuff to a socks game i feel like and i would say as a band we're more of a get drunk and hug band yeah, so yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it's still getting in the way of that sometimes. I feel like it ruins friendships. Yeah. So that is more or less my last question or questions, a couple of questions. Um, so being on this tour with Weed Eater, the last time I saw Weed Eater was at the Bottom Lounge in Chicago and um, kind of like you said, a mid size venue. Um, but every time that I had ever gone to see them or heard anyone see them, um, Dixie likes to drink a lot. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I'm not trying to get any, like, spill any uh, gossip or anything like that. But um, he would, like, I'm pretty sure he puked on stage when I saw him, if I remember <laughs> right. Awesome. Um, he, like, came out, like, twirling a bottle of Evan yeah. Williams around his head, yeah. uh, like, mid riff, just puked on the side of the yeah, stage. Yeah. He's, uh, he's been known, apparently, to. Uh, to pick uh, to pick a bottle up with his mouth while he's playing and take a drink yeah. as well. Um, but from my standpoint so far, he definitely can drink some whiskey. Like yeah. no one I've ever seen. But I haven't seen him stumble or drop anything. He's just not missed one. Guy. No, he's pa just packs insane. up packs up his own gear every night. I mean, I I mean I've ne I mean I just I and and he's. Uh, He's he's definitely wild in a good time, but I I don't think it's um, it, it's not to the extent of what you would think with someone who drinks a fair amount of whiskey. Yeah, yeah. I mean they're they're like they're pros. Like I mean, drinking whiskey. I mean I feel like they do 
more than I can do not drinking any whiskey at all. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, they're, they're on, on their game every single night, like really just ripping the stage basically apart and putting it back together at the end of the night. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and they do, they do all of it without sound checking. They hate to sound check. Yeah. So they just don't. Yeah. They show up when they want to. They say, put your gear on stage. I mean, they, they've been so accommodating. And they've said, listen, if you guys are on time, and which you guys have been, just set yourself stuff up on stage. We'll work around you guys. I mean, they've been super nice, super accommodating, great people to be out with. High boring as well. I mean, it's just been a, this package has been, once again, a little, a, a, it'd be a different package for us, but, um, it's, it's worked out great with great people. And once again, the, the shows have just been insane. I mean, they, well, it's been historic venues. They've been packed. People get wild. Like, it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun That's so far. Awesome. And then if you ever, like, I know for me, like, like whenever we go out on tour with a band, you know, you kind of, like, tippy-toe the first couple of days and you vibe them out. But if you needed, like, an excuse to like a band even more from someone who's been out with Weed Eater for the past few weeks... Those boys are sweethearts, like total sweethearts. And we had the same thing like when we went out with Paul Bear too. You know, just like when you get that click and it's just like there's nothing more rewarding than when you're like, these dudes are cool. And these dudes are like leaps and bounds further than we are right now. And yeah. for them just to be like, no, 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 come come do this. What questions you got? Nah, do this. Don't cut your set short because you blew a snare and ruined a pedal. Like, you play your set. If anyone has a problem with it, come talk to me. That's a quote. So. That, that's, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> so really good dudes. Really, really good dudes. That's awesome. Well, uh, I'm, I think I'm going to wrap it up then. I right. appreciate you guys coming out. and um, Yeah, thanks for everybody. And uh, thanks to Dave here for taking care of our cameras. And thanks to Noah and Dark Matter for letting us use this yeah, space. Thanks, and, uh, Thank you, Noah. Yeah, so <laughs> thanks to Don Pedro Carnitas for all the awesome yeah. food. And, uh, straight fire. Yeah. Straight fire. So we'll see you guys tonight at the Empty Bottle. Thanks for thanks checking for in. Yeah. No problem, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.